This is Dr. Drew Hall with Upper Cervical Healthcare of Los Angeles and Carson. Today what I want to talk about is anxiety disorders. In the United States there are 40 million, 40 million people who suffer with chronic anxiety disorders which is about 18% of the population over 18 years old. That's kind of mind-blowing. However, living in LA with all the stress and traffic, it's not hard to imagine that it's probably a little higher here in the LA metro area. Now, what is anxiety? Anxiety is the body's inability to deal with outside stressors. And it doesn't matter whether it's post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety attacks, general anxiety disorder. You're taking in outside stimuli in the life and your body is not adapting to it appropriately and that's what produces that terrible feeling that you get when you have anxiety. Now there's two parts to the nervous system. There's a sympathetic side and the parasympathetic side. And the sympathetic side they call the what? The fight or flight system. And basically let's say you were in the forest and a bear jumps out behind a tree. What's the first thing that's going to happen? Your heart rate's going to go up and you're going to feel that anxious feeling why your body's preparing you to flee, flight, right? So there are several things that can kick off anxiety in people, but generally what's happening is the sympathetic nervous system has become hyperactive and there's a little gland that sits on top of the kidney called the um, adrenal gland and the adrenal gland is responsible for producing cortisol. So when the body has high cortisol levels, you're more prone to anxiety. Now, for those of you who have had anxiety attacks, there's kind of a feedback loop that can happen when you've had one anxiety attack because for those of you who have had them, and I did in the past, so I'm well versed in what that feels like, but when you have your first anxiety attack, it's really uncomfortable. And it's so uncomfortable that after it happens, you're fearful that another one's gonna happen. And so there's kind of this stress mechanism that happens. You get an anxiety attack, it's terribly uncomfortable. So even though you may be out of the attack, you're worried about having your next one. And then if you don't drop down all the way to like a normal baseline with no anxiety and you're kind of in anxiety anyway, when you don't have an anxiety attack, of course the mind starts to run. Most of these patients have trouble sleeping at night. And when you have trouble sleeping at night and you're always kind of worried, that's a big stressor in the system. And I'm of the belief system that an anxiety attack is kind of like it's a pressure cooker. Your body's under stress and it's continually under stress and the way that it kind of deals with it and blows off steam is by having a big anxiety attack to temporarily reset the nervous system. Because what do you feel like generally after you have an anxiety attack? After it's done, you feel tired, right? So. I believe it's kind of a protective mechanism of the body so you don't have a mental breakdown. Now, so we talked about anxiety is uh, the body's inability to deal with stress. So what can you do? There's a lot of things that you can do to help yourself naturally and not become a casualty of the system and take Prozac and, and all the other different medications out there that they prescribe for anxiety. You wanna know what's, how do I get the body to work better so I don't have anxiety in the first place. First thing I would tell you outside of what we do in our office is stay off Google. Every patient that I have that comes in the office is the first thing I tell them. Do not get on Google. Don't spend eight hours a day. If you're researching, fine to find something like this online to find a solution, that's one thing. But if you find yourself in the spiral where you're researching, 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 you're gonna find that you're gonna have pretty much every disease that you research and that will only heighten your anxiety. So get off of Google. Uh, other than trying to find a solution for what's going on, but if you're spending eight hours a day, stop. Second thing you can do, meditation. Um, get yourself in a quiet room, focus on your breath in and out for 20 minutes. When your mind starts to drift away, go back to the breath. If you wanna look it up on Google, look up mindfulness meditation. It's a really great technique that can help you with anxiety. Third thing getting back to the nervous system and how your body deals with stress. The central nervous system, which is composed of the brain, which sits inside, inside the head, and the spinal cord, that's basically the seat of control for everything in your body. And if your spine doesn't have injury to it and everything in the spine is moving the way that it's supposed to, the central nervous system is gonna function normally. However, if you've had a car accident, a whiplash injury, you had a concussion, you fell off upside down the monkey bars when you were younger, 
those types of blunt head traumas can cause this bone, this is the atlas, there's a joint on the right, and there's a joint on the left, and that's right where the head sits. So you have a bowling ball sitting on this two ounce bone, and prior neck trauma can cause that top vertebra to shift and lock, and what does that do? It causes an interference to the central nervous system and causes your body not to work the way that it was intended to work. One of the side effects of C1 being locked out of position is it increases the sympathetic tone, the sympathetic nervous system in the body, which is one of the underlying predispositions why people suffer from anxiety disorder. So what we do in our office is we run the patient through a battery of tests to determine do they have an upper neck spinal misalignment? Is it impacting the, the nervous system? Is it decreasing function in the body? And if the answer is yes to that, then we take very precise imaging that looks at how this joint and this joint fits to the head. We want to know precisely how many millimeters it's out of alignment, what direction it's off, because everyone's different. And once we know that information, we make a precise correction to set the vertebra back under the body's control with no twisting, no popping, no pulling. So it's very painless. It's very non-invasive, and it's a really powerful uh, procedure to get your central nervous system to quell down, to calm down, and to allow your body to go through a healing and recovery process. So if you're someone out there who's been suffering and you've tried everything else out there but you haven't tried upper cervical care, our office uh, does offer a free consultation. We have two offices, one's in Los Angeles, and that phone number is 213 399 seven 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 two and our Carson office phone number is three one zero three two four six one seven two if you're outside the Los Angeles area you've come across this video and it makes sense to you and you want to investigate an upper cervical doctor in your area call either of those numbers we'll be happy to find someone in your location that can help I uh, hope this uh, information will get in front of some people who are suffering they're looking for a natural solution and we hope you see you soon Thanks.